You think they would interview you like that? Me? If you came on? <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Felipe. And I'm Lillian. And we are the Postmodern Family. We are Americans living in the UK reacting to Great Britain. We make five new videos a week, so hit that subscribe button now to catch every one of them. And today we're going to react to Caleb Cooper on This Morning Britain about his appearance on Clarkson's Farm. Okay, why don't you tell our audience why Clarkson's Farm. So uh, Felipe and I were just looking to see what we could watch to, you know, lighten our days. Yeah. And um, Clarkson's Farm was something that we had heard about, so we figured we'd watch two episodes of it and actually we, we would watch one we said and then after mm. watching one we were like let's just watch another one so you might you may be able to tell but we liked it so we'd like to see what caleb cooper has to say and, and impart his knowledge of farming on us now then he's become an overnight sensation thanks to his Look how far they're sitting from each other yeah. Clarkson on uh, the amazon series clarkson's farm well farmer caleb cooper joins us in just a moment live from jeremy's farm but before we speak to him let's take a look at the D D Dilly Dilly Squat Squat farm. <laughs> that's amazing caleb welcome it's so nice to meet you how are we doing? You're okay? We're really, really good, really good. So listen, you'd been working this land long before Jeremy had come along, so you know that farm inside out. When you first found out that Jeremy Clarkson mm. off the telly was coming to own that land, to be your boss, essentially, how did you feel? Well, actually, he bought it in 2008, and I started working here, it must have been 2016. So I didn't actually know who, who actually owned the land. I was working for another chap in the village who used to contract farm it. And uh, I used to just turn up to work, go to work, and go into the fields and spray them and cultivate them. And then he told me, oh, it's Jeremy Clarkson's farm. And I said, oh, right, oh, brilliant, oh, whatever. OK. Anyway, uh, it got to the point where um, the chap I was working for retired. And he was like, I'm sorry, but I've not got a job anymore for you. And I was like, well, that's fine. I set up my own business uh, three years ago, and I'll just go and do something like that. And then at that point, Jeremy was like, well, you can come and still run this farm if you want. You know, we still need to farm it. He said, but the only problem is I'll be, I'll be your boss and farming it with you. And I was like, oh, right, OK. <laughs> so well, he, it made it a little bit interesting, but it he was good. Is, uh, calm, and I, I watched uh, three of them last night, and I, can't, I literally can't wait to watch the rest. It is brilliant television. You are both fantastic. It's a, it's a perfect mix of characters. <laughs> what it is, though, it, it's, the, it's such a perfect highlight of how hard it is to farm. Is that a question? It's yeah, a statement. I mean, it is hard. I mean, it's every Can day, you confirm non-stop. Okay. You know, it's not just eight-hour days. You know, it's sixteen-hour days, and through the summer, I mean, through the winter, I, I do do a little bit of a less hours. You know, could be got to seven hours or something like that. But in the summer, it, it is non-stop, continuous with the harvest. You know, with Jeremy does the sheep work. I don't do any sheep work at all, um, which probably made it very clear in the in the in the episode that you've probably seen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's hard work. It's hard work. So how is he as a boss then? Because the relationship between you is, I mean, it's comedy gold, it's, it's brilliant to watch, but, you know, he is your boss. However, you're the one that knows everything. Yeah, I mean, I'm the boss, really. <laughs> um, you know, he, he will say that he's a boss, and technically he is my boss. You know, don't get me wrong, he is my boss, but he's, he's a boss and a friend. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's very difficult, to, uh, to, you know, to work with him. You know, he doesn't listen to me. But the good thing is, he has a genuine interest in the farming, which makes it easier, I must admit. But yeah, he don't listen. That's why you see me probably shout at him, and I do get genuinely angry when he when he does make a mistake. Well, we've actually got so. that clip. We've got we've got the clip because you've specifically told him uh, how to how to drill seeds into a field in a in a very and you see it in the countryside and it was amazing to think. Oh, that's why they do it. I understand now why you have those tram lines in, in fields. We'll, we'll explain yeah. what happened after we've had a look at the clip, because, again, he didn't listen to you. <laughs> so, so it would help, it would help and save time if he listened to you. Yeah, I mean, that's only, like, 30 seconds, but, I mean, I was out there for, like, six hours trying to teach him how to do it, and, you know, and I was like, right, you know what you're doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you could see it going in one ear and just out the other. So I was like, oh, this is not going to go down well. And, um, I mean, 
you've seen you've seen that little 30 seconds. Yeah, like I say, it was six hours we was out there and I was teaching them how to drill. It's, it's one of the most important jobs on the farm, drill, drill in a field ready for the end of the year to harvest with it. A, with a tractor. And he messed up and it, I mean, I was genuinely... With a tractor that you hate, uh, this massive tractor that's way too big, it's all in German, he can't read how to work it. Yeah, I mean, it's the worst tractor uh, anyone could have. I mean, I've got an old Lamborghini, but that is something else. I mean, it's in the shed now where it should stay and rot, if, I, if, if I'm honest with you. I mean, I think there's a list of things that I hate about it. And the list would just be like, you know, folding out like three bits of paper. <laughs> so you're, the, the thing is, how, how has this been for you? Because obviously you love the nature of your work, you're very good at what you do, very knowledgeable. But this, being sort of a reality star, a star of this new show, was not on the cards for you originally. However you are, everybody feels very drawn to you because of your character. I mean, walking down the street, have things changed for you? Yeah, massively. I mean, my Instagram blew up like it went. I think I got eighty thousand followers <laughs> over like literally like, two weeks or a week or something like that. And I mean, I can't walk down the street now without someone going, "Can I have a selfie?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, absolutely." And I, you know, I'm a general, you know, a nice guy. I don't want to go. No, go away. You know, I can't do that. I have to sit there and talk to them and take <laughs> the selfie. Which is, you know, I like talking to people. I would talk to anyone for hours on end if I had the chance. But. Um, I mean, yeah, it's changed massively. I mean, I, I like where I am now in the middle of a field. You know, that's me. I'm happy here. But it take me to London. It's horrible. It's a, I was worth <laughs> my life going to London. Well, you did come once, didn't one day you? He oh, was went. it a school trip? <laughs> yeah, so I went on a school trip with the school and stayed in the coach. And then I also went on, I mean, on the series, if you watch the series on episode seven, I went, they, Jeremy sent me to London to sell wasabi, which was very interesting. And you hated it. Absolutely. <laughs> Worth there in my life. <laughs> um, would you, oh. Kayla, would you recommend to uh, any uh, younger people watching now the, uh, the farming life? What do you get out of it? Why should they take up farming? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I love my life. And, I, and to me, a job, you know, if I had to get up every morning at 8 o'clock and go, oh, God, I've got to go and do that job again. You know, that's not a job. You know, that's something you hate. Why would you want to do that? To me, I get up in the morning and go, right, what am I doing today? I know what I'm doing. I'm going on the tractor and I'm going to go and put some fertilizer on. Brilliant. Go, shower, and I Jeremy get up, I have a cup of tea or whatever, and then go out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, I mean, it's a way of life. It sounds like, it, it, um, it certainly looks like a, 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 an incredible way of life, but it looks like hard work as very, well. Yeah, um, hard and work. if you're Jeremy Clarkson, <laughs> a very expensive way of life. I know. It's costing I a fortune. Know. Uh, <laughs> thank Caleb, you, thank Caleb. you very much. Thank you. <laughs> it's so hard to do these interviews live. Yeah, it's with like that the, uh, time lag. Yeah. Makes it difficult. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what what do you think of the interview? First? It was okay, yeah. It was very softball. Um, you think they would interview you like that? Me? If you came on? Do they know that they've asked me? We could tell them. So they see, so is that a wonderful way of life? Yeah, exactly. You know, so I so don't tell know. us, do you, would you recommend it for other little <laughs> girls to be a traditional housewife? Be, so be, if you guys didn't know, we went on Stacey Dooley, Stacey Dooley Sleeps Over, mm. our first... Um, Major network series, appearance. The first episode of the second series was featuring our mm. family. And um, and then, therefore, ITV asked me if I would go and live onto their show and be interviewed by Phil and Holly. And I said no, because mm. the way that they treated Alina and... Kate Pettit. Of the other people that uh, represent Trad Whiffery, <laughs> uh -huh. that... It, it just seems like I I feel like they just want me on just for that the sound bites and just the, mm. the, the attacks. So in terms of um, conservative uh, interviewees, they they pretty much tear apart. Um, so mm. I'm not. So then this was a softball sort of. Yeah, he's they a like 21 him. year old guy. He mm. you know he's cool. He's yeah yeah yeah. There's nothing you wouldn't get that treatment, but he I wouldn't, did. No. So softball, but then so then. Was there any contrast between the interviewers and the interviewee that stood out for I you? I just felt like Caleb, it, it seems really genuine. Mm. And I feel like Phil and Holly, Holly don't feel Are very, fake. They don't feel very genuine to me. Yeah. Um, but I, I remember when we watched the show, 
he really did stand out for us. I th- mm. I thought twenty one year old already has mm. a business. Mm. You know, this is someone that I would like our daughter to grow up and marry. A, a some mm. someone who's self sufficient and and interested in his work and just out mm. there doing it, mm. um, rather than m- maybe that you know a, a yeah. ten year long doctor's degree and yeah yeah you know. for me the the Romans and then the English and then the Americans Mm -hmm. and even Europeans considered the ideal statesman and the ideal warrior to be drawn from the farming and agricultural community because Mm -hmm. it had a hardening of character. It had a simple, humbling um, impact on a person's life because Mm -hmm. it is hard. You do get your hands dirty. You get dirty. And it takes diligence and discipline Mm -hmm. and often dealing with chance and weather that is unpredictable. Mm -hmm. So surviving as a farmer, the stock of farmers is the stock where you draw your leaders from, was the Roman vision and the English and the American vision. Mm -hmm. So that, I didn't know that there was, I mean, obviously there's farming happening in the UK. I just didn't think there was local boy farming i thought it had all become industrial mm, like mm. in the u.s where it's just mega farming it does yeah, and yeah. you have to go into half a million in debt just to get the kit to tend to your farm and so it's it's price prohibitive for an individual but it's but the, a big corporation can do it so it, it lost yeah. that luster for me but it was good to see someone like caleb cooper which seems to be living that out still. So I really, yeah. I really liked it as mm. well, and I liked him. Yeah. Um, um, did you know that Bill Gates owns two hundred sixty-seven thousand acres of farmland yeah. in America? Yeah. So he, I think, is the biggest private owner of farmland in the U.S. What do you think he's doing with all that land? He's gonna make imitation meat stuff, I think. Wow. Um, and someone was telling me too that the in the U.S. at least the meat corporations so the the 75 percent at least of meat sold in the u.s is controlled by four companies Mm -hmm. the rest are individuals or Mm -hmm. families and mom and pops Mm -hmm. and those four companies have the suspicion is that they've artificially kept the price have um jacked the price up even though there's ample supply supply and so okay. they're trying to price out the common man of meat yeah. so that meat will become a luxury item and the mm-hmm. plebs and the unwashed will eat Im- Im- imitation meat. And they're going to try to sell it to you as it's better for you anyway because it's engineered. So it doesn't that, make any sense. That's what's, that, I, that's tin, that might seem like tinfoil, but that's where people are saying it's going. And that's why we eventually want to have a farm of our own so we can raise our own meat and raise our own vegetables. I don't know about raising our own meat and stuff. Why that, not? Is that... You have to have a lot of cattle to... No. Um, Michael Foster says he, he's got chickens for laying eggs. Yeah, and then he's starting with um, rabbits. And so yeah, yeah. there's a way to get meat that's not hmm. huge cattle or anything. Yeah, yeah. I guess when you say meat, I typically mean beef. That typically... Yeah, I mean, that is a large... I would, I would think of lambs and... Um, rabbits and just smaller yeah. animals first to see it's just the rate of re- replication, replication yeah. of the animal to the rate of consumption of the meat mm-hmm. you end up having to have many animals it seems that's my impression mm. to keep up keep a pace mm. to be independent and not rely on shop bought meat but this is what they did for many thousands of years they would have a few cows and then yeah the, but know, the butchers would... would buy yeah there would be there wouldn't be multi massive farms there would be a collection of farmers that had uh, enough cattle to feed the village or whatever and keep up pace but i don't know that there was there were individual families that fed themselves meat and that that was the model that every family fed themselves meat i don't think that was it Hmm. okay so anyway but it's a good show and good guy thanks so much for watching we hope you enjoyed it if you live on a farm leave a comment thanks bye bye